the oppressions that we face are internalized and we're taught that, you know, it's just us that the people who are marginalized, that's our barrier to face alone. But it was at that moment that I realized and I told myself that if that ever happened again, if I ever saw a barrier um, that I could push for, I would push for it. The reason why we talk of systemic racism is exactly to show that it's not isolated problems in one area or one individual. It has to do with how different policies and different practices, especially in employment and education, exclude black people. As my grandmother used to say, girl, yes, you can. Go for it. And I say to young girls, especially to black young girls, don't let the microaggression, the prejudicial things, the, uh, whatever there is in the society hold you back. Anything that anybody else can do, we have ways to accommodate ourselves thanks to modern technology and thanks to extensive training that we receive, like orientation mobility training. Braille lessons, life skills training, all of these things empower us and allow us to live fulfilling lives and to accomplish things that a lot of able-bodied people unfortunately still don't realize we're perfectly capable of accomplishing. I see myself as a person that is going to help bring some closure to these issues uh, and some healing. I think there's a real need for our nation to heal. So I see myself as being a bridge between different people and bringing a discussion to Canada, and we call it reconciliation. That's why we're working towards increasing diversity and inclusion at all levels of decision-making, including more women in senior management positions, increased opportunities for women to start and grow their own business, more company board seats held by women, and greater representation of women and underrepresented groups in elected office and in our justice system.